Ferrari is already preparing intensively for the 2026 Formula One season, with particular attention and strategic focus on its power unit development. For several months, it has been widely assumed across the paddock and among industry insiders that Mercedes possesses the most technically convincing project, a perception reinforced by whispers and off-the-record comments from experienced engineers who, after switching teams in recent years, quietly shared this information. Despite this external perception, Ferrari is not stepping back or slowing down. On the contrary, the Marinello team is working in strict secrecy and behind the scenes with the aim of surprising its direct rivals and competitors. This represents a highly extreme but carefully considered and calculated engineering approach, partially enabled and supported by a technical loophole offered by the FIA, the governing body of Formula One. The new generation of Formula One power units presents an exceptionally significant technological challenge, offering a wide range of opportunities for development and refinement over the next several years. It is widely believed among technical analysts, engineers, and industry insiders that the element likely to make the most decisive difference on the track will be the management and optimization of hybrid power output over the course of a single lap. Proper management is crucial in order to avoid severe and sudden energy shortages that could be caused by the motor generator unit heat component of the hybrid system. On this point, it is worth highlighting that the FIA has already mitigated the severity of this risk through the implementation of the ramp-down mechanism, which helps to regulate energy output and reduce the likelihood of critical failures during races. Nevertheless, the contribution of the internal combustion engine itself remains highly significant and will play a crucial role in overall performance. The power delivered by the internal combustion engine in the new units is expected to be lower than that of the current generation of power units. However, the introduction and use of sustainable fuels open new technical possibilities and performance scenarios. The Ferrari engineers and technicians appear to have placed substantial emphasis on maximizing the efficiency of their new six-cylinder engine configuration, pushing several technical concepts to their limits in the pursuit of peak performance. While this approach is audacious, it is not entirely unprecedented, as Ferrari has previously adopted similar extreme strategies during the early era of the wing car regulations in Formula One history. In 2022, the introduction of E10 fuels coincided with the deployment of the power unit 0667, which was widely regarded as one of the most competitive and technologically advanced engines on the Formula One grid that season. At that time, the engineering team led by Enrico Gualtieri undertook a deliberately extreme project, fully aware of the pressing need to recover significant technological ground in comparison to Mercedes and Honda. From a pure performance perspective, the objectives set by Ferrari were largely achieved, delivering a highly competitive power unit, although this success came with certain compromises in terms of reliability. This trade-off in reliability was one of the factors that partially sidelined Charles Leclerc from the battle for the Drivers' Championship that season. It was a known and anticipated side effect of pushing the engineering boundaries, as following the formal freeze on power unit development in September 2022, the Ferrari team in Marinello took advantage of a carefully regulated exemption granted by the FIA. This exemption allowed the Italian side to implement targeted modifications aimed at enhancing engine durability and addressing reliability concerns. The team utilized this regulatory window to its fullest advantage during the subsequent 2023 season, allowing the engineers to refine and strengthen the power unit without compromising competitive performance. The opportunities offered by the additional development opportunities mechanism will also be very important. In recognition of the potential performance disparities that could arise between next-generation power units, the FIA introduced what is effectively a safety valve for teams, the opportunity for additional testing, development, and upgrades. From 2026 through to 2030, the governing body will closely monitor the performance of the internal combustion engines of all power units supplied by each manufacturer. For each internal combustion engine, an average power output will be calculated to serve as a benchmark for comparison across the grid. The methodology for calculating and monitoring ICE performance is detailed in the FIAF 1DOC-CXX document, which is made available to engine manufacturers and technical partners. According to this methodology, if a manufacturer's ICE produces more than 3% less power than the reference ICE, defined as the internal combustion engine with the highest power output, 
the manufacturer is granted additional development and upgrade opportunities. These opportunities are available for implementation starting one week after the fifth race of the Formula One season. In practical terms, this regulatory provision allows turbo hybrid manufacturers such as Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, and others to allocate a larger portion of their development budget specifically for upgrades, while also enjoying increased flexibility in the use of test benches and simulation tools. The FIA maintains the authority to revoke these benefits if the upgrades implemented by any manufacturer result in a performance advantage deemed unfair relative to competitors who were not granted any ADOs, ensuring the playing field remains as level as possible. Ferrari therefore pushes technical concepts to the extreme. Beyond the additional development and upgrade opportunities framework, the FIA also allows power unit modifications in the event that recurring reliability issues emerge. This regulatory flexibility enables manufacturers to adopt bold, audacious, and high-risk approaches in the design and engineering of internal combustion engines. Formula One history demonstrates that it is generally easier to take a high-performance engine and improve its reliability than to attempt to increase the performance of an already reliable engine, making this approach particularly attractive to teams seeking a competitive edge. It appears that Ferrari is following this strategy closely, applying the same principle adopted in 2022, pushing the technical design of the power unit to its absolute limits without hesitation or fear of taking calculated risks. There has been extensive speculation within the paddock regarding the design of the engine's radiant mass system, particularly as all manufacturers are expected to focus on minimizing the size and weight of heat exchangers and associated components. Ferrari's approach reflects a deliberate willingness to pursue extreme engineering solutions in the hope of gaining a meaningful advantage. Following a 2024 Formula One season that ended just short of the Constructors' Championship, the Marinello team has faced a challenging 2025 full of disappointments. No race wins, except for Hamilton's sprint victory in Shanghai, and few podiums in the first 16 rounds of the season have been results far below expectations, especially considering a lineup regarded by many as the best on the grid. For now, Formula One fans, technical analysts, and competitors alike can only wait and observe, keeping in mind that Ferrari has clearly chosen a bold, high-stakes path in an attempt to surprise its rivals and maximize its competitiveness in the highly demanding 2026 Formula One season. The Marinello team's strategic and technical choices will likely influence the broader grid, shaping the development philosophy of other manufacturers and potentially altering the competitive landscape for several years to come. For this reason, Ferrari cannot afford to make mistakes with the 2026 project. Any failure of the Project 678 could put the entire technical department at risk, starting with Frederick Vasseur, who recently signed a multi-year extension.